we want to find the centroid or center of mass of the region with uniform density bounded by the graphs of the functions f of x equals x squared plus four, graphed here in blue, and g of x equals two x squared, graphed here in red. To understand what we're finding when we find the centroid or center of mass, we can think of this bounded region as a thin plate or planar lamina with uniform density. When we find the centroid or center of mass, we find the point where this thin plate would balance. Looking at the image here on the right, this point is the center of mass or centroid of this thin plate with uniform density because at this point the thin plate balances. In order to find the centroid or center of mass given by this formula here, we'll begin by determining the total mass which is equal to density times area. Because we have uniform density, we'll use the constant k for density. This integral here gives us the area. We should recognize this as the integral used to find the area bounded by two functions. And then we'll find the moment about the x-axis using this formula, and then the moment about the y-axis using this formula. Then once we have this information, we can find the centroid or center of mass given by the point, the moment about the y-axis divided by m, comma, the moment about the x-axis divided by m. We'll begin by determining the total mass of this bounded region with uniform density. But before we do this, notice how because we have symmetry across the y-axis with this region that has uniform density, the moment about the y-axis will be zero and therefore the x-coordinate of the centroid will also be zero. But we'll go ahead and verify all this by using our formulas. So the blue function is f of x and the red function is g of x. Also notice the points of intersection here and here where the x-coordinates of these points are negative two and two. And therefore the total mass is equal to k times the integral of, again, f of x minus g of x, which would be the quantity x squared plus four minus two x squared integrated with respect to x from negative two to two. Now notice how here we could integrate from zero to two and then double the integral since we do have symmetry across the y-axis. Let's go ahead and just leave it in this form here. So let's simplify the integrand. We would have x squared minus two x squared or negative x squared and then plus four. Now let's find the antiderivative. So we have negative x to the third divided by three plus four x. Now we'll substitute two for x and then negative two, then find the difference. Notice when x is two, we'd have negative eight thirds plus four times two or eight. And then when x is negative two, we'd actually have eight thirds plus negative eight or minus eight. So we have k times negative eight thirds plus eight would be the same as negative eight thirds plus twenty-four thirds. So we'd have sixteen thirds minus, this is negative sixteen thirds. So we have k times thirty-two thirds and therefore the total mass is thirty-two k divided by three. Next we'll find the moment about the x-axis. So we have k divided by two times the integral of f of x squared minus g of x squared. So we have the quantity x squared plus four squared minus two x squared to the second integrated with respect to x from negative two to two. Now we'll simplify the integrand. So we'll square x squared plus four, that would be x to the fourth plus eight x to the second plus sixteen. And then we have minus, this would be four x to the fourth. Now we'll combine like terms. So we have x to the fourth minus four x to the fourth, so negative three x to the fourth plus eight x squared plus sixteen. 
and then we'll find the antiderivative. So we'd have negative three, or negative three over one times x to the fifth over five, plus eight, or eight over one times x to the third over three, plus 16x. So first we'll sub two for x. So we'll have negative three over one times, two to the fifth is 32, so 32 fifths plus eight over one times two to the third is eight, so times eight thirds, and then plus 16 times three. And this is supposed to be an eight. And now we'll substitute negative two for x, so we have negative three over one times negative two to the fifth is negative 32, so we have negative 32 fifths plus eight over one times negative two to the third is negative eight, so negative eight thirds and then plus 16 times negative three. So to save some time, this comes out to k over two times the quantity of 512 fifteenths minus negative 512 fifteenths, which equals k divided by two times 1,024 fifteenths, which gives us 512k divided by 15 for the moment about the x-axis. And this does tend to be the more difficult moment to calculate. And now we'll find the moment about the y-axis and then finally find the coordinates of the centroid. So the moment about the y-axis, which we know should be zero because of the symmetry about the y-axis, is equal to k the density times the integral of x times f of x, which is x squared plus four, minus g of x, which is two x squared. And we integrate from negative two to two. Let's simplify the integrand. Notice if we combine like terms, we'll have negative x squared, then multiply by x, so we have negative x cubed, and then we have four times x, or four x, or plus four x. Now we'll find the antiderivative. So we'll have negative x to the fourth over four, plus four, four over one, times x squared over two. Notice how this simplifies. So we have negative x to the fourth divided by four. This would be plus two x squared. So when x is two, we'd have negative two to the fourth. That's gonna be negative 16 fourths plus two times two squared. And then when x is negative two, we'll still have negative 16 fourths plus two times negative two squared. So this is not being as we expected, k times zero, which is zero, which is the moment about the y-axis. So now putting all the pieces together, the x-coordinate of the centroid, or x-bar, is equal to the moment about the y-axis divided by m, which would be zero divided by 32 thirds k, which is zero, and then the y-coordinate of the centroid is given by the moment about the x-axis divided by m, which is this quotient here. Notice how the k's simplify out, and this quotient here turns out to be 3.2, which we see here on the calculator. So if we plot this point on the coordinate plane, 0, 3.2 would be approximately here, this is the centroid, or the point where this region of uniform density would balance on a fulcrum. I hope you found this helpful.